In a set of cues and air rods, you have 10 groups of different colored rods that represent different sizes. If we use the white rods to represent one unit, we can determine how many units or parts make up each other rod. Let's look at the orange rods, which are the longest in this set. If we line up the white rods to one orange rod, we can see that it takes 10 white rods to make one whole orange rod. This shows us that if the orange rod is one whole, the size of the whole rods are tenths because it takes 10 of them to make up the whole. One whole is equivalent to 10 tenths. What other fractions are equivalent to one whole? Looking at the blue rod, it does not completely line up with the orange rod that represents one whole. If you glance at the white rods, we see that the blue rod is actually equivalent to nine white rods or units. Next, we'll go to the brown rod. It does not line up with the orange rod either, and if we add in another brown rod, Together, the value will be greater than the orange rod that is representing one whole. Comparing the brown rod to the white rods, we can see that each brown rod is equal to eight white rods or units. Moving on to the black rod, it does not line up equally with the orange rod, and just like the brown rod, if we add in a second black rod, together they will be greater than the orange rod that is representing the whole. We can see that the black rod, when lined up to the white rods, is equal or equivalent to seven white rods or units. Are you beginning to notice a pattern? Next is the dark green rod. One dark green rod is just a little past half of the orange rod. Doubling the dark green rod will still create a value that is greater than one whole being represented by the orange rod. The value of each dark green rod is equivalent to six white rods or units. With the yellow rod, we can see that is equivalent to five white rods or units. Knowing that five is half of 10, the total number of white rods or units equal to the orange rod, we now know that each yellow rod is half of one orange rod. Since we learned that a yellow rod is equivalent to five white rods, we now know that five white rods or five tenths is equivalent to one half. Two yellow rods line up equally with one orange rod. The orange rod represents one whole. When it takes two equal parts to equal one whole, we call those parts halves. So two halves is equivalent to one whole. Continuing to explore equivalency using the cues and air rods allows you and your students to determine which fractions are equivalent to each other and which ones are equivalent to one whole. Let's leave the yellow rods there for now since we found that they are equivalent to the orange rod, which is again representing the whole. Place the purple rods over the yellow rods to determine if they too are equivalent to one whole. We can see that two of the purple rods come up just a little short and three purple rods will have a value greater than one whole. Comparing the purple rods to the white rods or units, we see that one purple rod is equivalent to four white rods or four tenths, and two purple rods are equivalent to eight white rods or eight tenths. Next, we'll try out the light green rods. They have a size that is equal to three white rods or units. Let's add on more to see how they line up. Two light green rods are equivalent to six white rods and three light green rods are equivalent to nine white rods. They are just one white rod short of being equivalent to the orange rod that represents one whole. Adding in a fourth light green rod will cause the total value to be greater than one whole. The last colored rod that we'll try out is the red rod. Starting out, we can see that each red rod is equivalent to two white rods or units. Two red rods equal four white rods. Three red rods equal six white rods. Four red rods equal eight white rods. And five red rods equal 10 white rods. Yes, we found more equivalent fractions.
It takes five red rods to line up equally with the orange rod that represents one whole. Therefore, they are equivalent. Since it takes five of the red rods to line up with the whole, we can call them fifths. Five fifths is equivalent to one whole. Looking back at each red rod separately, again, we know that one fifth is equivalent to two tenths, two fifths are equivalent to four tenths, three fifths are equivalent to six tenths, four fifths are equivalent to eight tenths, and five fifths are equivalent to 10 tenths, which is also equivalent to one whole. This is a great way to explore equivalency using concrete models with your students to help develop that firm foundation in equivalent fractions. Now, what if the size of the whole was different? Will the value of the other colored rods change as well? Let's keep exploring. In this next example, we will use the brown rod as a representation of one whole. Comparing the brown rod to the white rods or units, we are reminded that the brown rod is equivalent to eight white rods or units. So the parts that make up the brown rod can be called eighths because it takes eight equal parts to create the whole. Eight eighths is equivalent to one whole. Now we'll find out which other rods or fractions are equivalent to this one whole or eight eighths. We know that the orange rod will be too long and the blue rod will be too long as well. The black rod comes close, but is not quite equivalent to this hole, and the dark green rod does not work out either. Unlike in our first example with this hole, the yellow rod is actually greater than one half of the brown rod representing the hole. So now there is just the purple, light green, and the red rods left. When you line up the purple rod with the brown rod, the purple rod ends at the halfway point of the brown rod. Let's compare it to the white rods. One purple rod is equivalent to four white rods. Since the whole is equivalent to eight white rods, we know four is half of eight. So yes, the purple rod is one half of the brown rod. This tells us that one half is equivalent to four eighths. We learned in the first example that one half is equivalent to five tenths. Now we know that one half can also be equivalent to four eighths. Bringing in a second purple rod or a second half, this shows that two halves is also equivalent to eight eighths, which is equivalent to one whole. So far with our examples, we've learned that 10 tenths, five fifths, two halves and eight eighths are all equivalent to one whole. And we've also learned that five tenths and four eighths are both equivalent to one half. Let's try out the light green rods with this example. Using two light green rods doesn't quite line up with the whole and three light green rods takes the value beyond the brown rod which is representing the one whole. Last we have the red rod. Four red rods line up perfectly with the brown rod as one whole. We can call them fourths because it takes four of them to line up with the whole. Again, we found more equivalent fractions. We can add these to the list of equivalent fractions we've discovered with the Cusinaire rods. Four fourths is equivalent to one whole. One fourth is equivalent to two eighths. Two fourths is equivalent to four eighths. Two fourths is also equivalent to one half. Three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. Four fourths is equivalent to one whole and eight eighths. Doing this activity is a great place to start with your students or revisit if necessary to help better deepen their understanding with equivalent fractions. You can continue to explore which fractions are equivalent using the six and the thirds. One great feature that the Q's and R rods have is that they are not pre-labeled. This allows students to use any of the colors as the whole and explore which other rods line up with that whole to show equivalency. Try this out with your students and your own set of Cusinaire rods.
or something very closely related to these math manipulatives such as fraction tiles or fraction strips without the labels. Pattern blocks work great too. The most important part is that you give your students the time and opportunity to explore equivalent fractions both on their own and with your support. This is so that they are able to make connections and see for themselves what it means and looks like when fractions are equivalent.